Welcome back. You are just in time for something that could potentially be momentous. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, it's always amazing to hear of South Africans being a part of scientific breath breakthroughs, especially ones as important as this. And the latest amazing breakthrough has one of our own at the very epicenter. I'm talking about Lynn Marie Burkholz, who is a professor in biochemistry and the South African Research Chair in Sustainable Malaria Control. She was a part of an international team that has recently discovered new compounds that could potentially Essentially eliminate malaria. This is massive. Professor Lynn Marie Burkholz joins us now to tell us more and hopefully receive our heaps of congratulations. Yes. Uh, Professor, a very good morning to you. Good morning. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Okay, we're going to be fixing that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. um, but we have seen some massive yeah. strides being made forward in the fight against malaria, but it's still one of humanity's mm. great conundrums, and we are hoping that this is going to be that silver bullet. So congratulations once again on the breakthrough, and welcome again, Professor. Um, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Morning, Graham, and morning, Kuchle. Um, great to connect with you. Mm. Uh, we've got to ask first off, why is this discovery so important? How could it potentially change how you are currently treating malaria? Yeah, well, Graham, I think what's so exciting about this discovery is that we identified new chemical compounds that are able to target multiple stages of the malaria parasite. So what you need to know is that this disease is caused by a little parasite um, that infects us as humans. And this parasite has multiple forms. Um, so it's a little bit of a shape shifter. And one of the forms like you've now seen on the graphics is, is infecting you and make you sick. And it's very important then to treat patients that are symptomatic of the disease. Mm. But then these little parasites can also escape and can be transmitted back to mosquitoes. And this continues the spread of the disease. So unfortunately, the current antimalarials that we have are not really able to effectively block this transmission cycle. Mm. And what we are very excited about from the University of Pretoria's side is that we were able to identify these additional compounds that are able to block this transmission cycle. So not only can we treat patients mm. and save lives, but we can also start, help to stop the spread of the disease. Why has it been so difficult over the years to kind of eliminate this deadly disease in most parts, especially of the African continent? Yeah, quickly, I mean, it's a, it's a very complicated disease. It, it has this mosquito vector that's very effective in doing its job in transmitting the parasites to humans. Mm -hmm. uh, but both the mosquito vector, unfortunately, is becoming resistant to our control tools, but also the malaria parasite. It's resistant to most of the antimalarials that's currently on the market. So we have to continuously find new compounds that can potentially be developed in future as new antimalarials. And, and that's a complicated process to do. It sounds like a massive step forward in breaking that cycle of reinfection in itself. Mm. I understand this was an international effort. How long have you been working on this project, building towards this discovery? Yeah, Graham, international partners, but I have to say also excellent scientists from South Africa. We, we uh, have a very good consortium between the University of Pretoria, WITS, uh, the CSR and then the drug discovery and development team at UCT. Um, and, and UCT particularly have been working on antimalarial drug discovery for about 10, 11 years now. And we got involved about five years ago to develop new technologies to look for these compounds that are able to block transmission a while. So, so it took us about three years to, to develop the technology in South Africa. And this particular project that led to this paper um, took about two years to complete. And Professor, what else needs to be done now? What new developments need to be discovered in order to say that a cure for malaria yeah, has been officially here, found? Yeah. Yeah, so definitely we have to be very careful. Uh, we cannot claim we have a cure from malaria. We've got new tools that can potentially develop in future. What we now have is something that shows us in an artificial system in the lab that we can block this transmission of the parasite between humans and mosquitoes. But that, that's the tip of the iceberg. There's a huge amount of work that still needs to be done to, to develop these compounds further as potential drug candidates. Um, and then only have we have to prove that it's e effective and safe for use in humans. So a lot of work, mm. a number of years of work that still needs to be done. 
So you're going to be kept very busy is what you're saying. So we wish you all the best of luck in your endeavors. We love the fact that this is such a collaborative effort here in South Africa that all of our top researchers and our departments within mm. our universities are all being lauded for their roles. And we have to congratulate you, Professor Lynn Marie Burkholz, for what sounds like a massive step in the right direction, yeah. at least. And I think um, in this time of the pandemic, it's uh, often easy to forget that malaria is still the mm. number one killer certainly on the African continent. So we applaud your efforts and we wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Chatting to Professor Lynn Marie Burkholz from the South African Research, or in fact, she is the chair in sustainable malaria control. I know she is the first to say that this isn't that silver bullet, but mm. this certainly feels like a massive stride forward. So congratulations to all involved.